Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome. Just a few housekeeping things before we start the performance. There is a intermission at about 50 minutes into the show, short intermission, and then the rest of the show runs a little bit quicker. Um, if you have to go to the bathroom or need to be excused, do not feel bashful to walk up in front of everybody and go out the exit right there. The actors are used to it. It is not embarrassing. It's not a big deal if you have to get up and go to the bathroom or take a phone call or whatever you need to do. So like I said, feel free to just get up and the exit is right over there. Um, intermission, bathroom, that's all I got. <laughs> we got snacks, we have candy grams, we have all kinds of stuff for the lobby during intermission, so please support our play and our students. So please sit back and relax and enjoy Barbie's Stairs to the Roof. Hail blue, but they're almost purple. 
These little accessory buttons are mother of pearl. I don't know anybody who wears a shirt like this! You don't, sir, but I do. Take it up with Franco for good specifications. Now, are you? I didn't see that you're putting words into my mouth. <laughs> Maybe 
No. So, uh, I'm going to be sad. Jeffrey Cab is on Highway 60, half past 10. All right. Okay, then. Goodbye. <clears throat> I have a letter here from Mr. Otto K. Dieselborn of Pascagoula, Mississippi. Mr. Dieselborn's letter states that a very strange odor has been detectable in this merchandise store ever since our client went in and installed this stripping. Customers nerve this odor as soon as they enter. They enter, sniff, turn around, and walk out. And Mr. Tizabor has the slightest doubt in his mind that this is a very strange, mysterious odor. He states, moreover, he is a nervous wreck. Nervous wreck. He's been to doctors, not once, but 15 times. 15 times. At the cost of two minutes. Walls, the floor, every inch, every inch of the woodwork has been scrubbed. Scrubbed. It is scolding hot water, containing a strong solution of Clorox disinfectant. Disinfectant. And even still, the very strange, mysterious odor continues. He states in his five-page letter, he feels not only justified in refusing to make our clients any. But also, he believes you have to sue our clients for damages amounting up to $10,000. $10,000! Now, let's take a look at our client's correspondence. Oh, whoopsie daisy.
step on her? No. She wouldn't have screeched like that unless she was hurt. Got it in for me, that's all. If she's got it in for you, it's because you do her some kind of deliberate injury. Every chance you get. Where have you been, I'm drinking? I was out with you. Huh. That is his question. How much did you drink? Three times, 26 ounces of that makes. I thought we decided to put your beer money up for the baby's carriage. Man proposes, God is supposed to. All right, we'll just put the baby on roller skates, I suppose. Mother just got off the phone. Was she on the phone? She thinks it's absolutely outrageous. What does she think is so outrageous? You know what? I waited for you one solid hour. I made the spaghetti dish. I kept it hot in the oven until nearly seven. And then I ate it myself. Every scrap of it too. I said to mother, why should I bother to keep food warm if you don't come home or you don't call the house? If Ben makes you nervous, just pack up your things and come home. In your condition, you can't afford to be nervous. <laughs> I guess we ought to have separate beds in the summer. Stay on your side, please. Don't worry, I'm all stay. I've been to the doctors. Dr. Robinson. Page of Dr. Robinson. He's <laughs> a lovely young man. <laughs> he says, Mrs. Murphy, you're doing a wonderful thing. Bringing a brand new life into the world. <laughs> yeah, I guess he's right. A miraculous thing is what Dr. Robinson calls it. Well, what right have I got to have a baby? None whatsoever, but nature is lenient, Ben, and she's giving you one. Now that you're becoming a father, you ought to settle down. Settle so down? How have I been doing the last eight years? Stirring up? Yes, stirring up hell in general for me and all my relations. Go to sleep. You women are too easy going. What do you mean by that? Before well, you let a man be the father of your children, you ought to demand that you should do something to improve the world the kid has to live in. Me, for instance, what have I done to improve the world? Nothing. Then I shouldn't be allowed to reproduce. You women are so easygoing that a man can come up to you with nothing but the ordinary equipment and you'll shout off so loud that the windows will break in the adjacent building. That is disgusting and is it true? It is! You think that anything that coos and gurgles and slobbers over your breast is perfectly good enough to populate the earth? Yeah. <laughs> Basically, why bother with the candy manufacturers are more discriminating? At least they have some pure fool law, some standard of quality and the problem of you! You produce a congenital moron and you shout to the world,
I had pinwheels in my head. I guess I shouldn't have taken up astronomy this spring. It makes the universe too big and the world too little. It is a little world, isn't it? It seems so terribly tiny, trapped in all that time and space they say it's surrounded by, and yet, as they say on this little star, by some miraculous accident of atoms, life was created and consciousness occurred, and here I am, Ben Murphy, and there you are. And this dear, funny little head of yours, there is something that holds the image of everything there is. Holds it until it breaks. And then let's go. Oh, man, I feel dizzy.
about Ben Murphy. I'm afraid he's going to pieces. Ben has always been an absolute screwball, even his wife. <laughs> she told me yesterday he went up to the office wearing cowboy boots. Confidentially, she says, I'm just about through. He's plunging back into his adolescence. Talks about rebellion. Rebellion's all right for the upper classes and the lower classes, but for the middle classes, it'll never do. The middle's always got to be the middle. Please close the door and talk the whole thing over with yourself! Okay, sweetheart. Was described as being in sea of flames. The military objectives took very little damage, but the civilian population suffered very terrible casualties. The sky at midnight was a blazing inferno. Waves upon waves of dive bombers swooped across the army bombardment. And this little thing was a bad thing. <laughs>
romance came into my life with a bang. But the man was married, married to a woman named Edna, who massages her chest every night with a big vapor on. You look a little down in the mouth. What's wrong? Still holding a torch, Mr. Warren B. Badger? Just for Bertha. Forget it. Just let it all go. Drop it like you would a piece of loose thread. And as you go to sleep tonight, say to yourself, <coughs> tomorrow I won't think about him. Why should I lie to myself when I know that I will? Besides, there won't be any tomorrow anyways. You know what you want to do? Go to church, read a book, learn how to play contract bridge. You don't understand. Don't you think I've ever had a crush? This man isn't a crush. Well, what is it then? Love. Because he's your boss. And he wears a white linen suit and a pale blue tie every day. You think that you love him. Bertha, am I invisible? What an idea. Nobody seems to notice me. No one is conscious of my existence. Men, you mean. Don't be discouraged. discouraged. For every surprise, there are at least 15 disappointments. Nowadays, men are concentrating on war at the cost of sex. What of it? Your day will come. How would you like a girl hide? No thanks. I had another girlfriend once. Kept brooding about some man working at her office. He never looked at Raymond. Drop it, I said, like you would a piece of loose thread. But she wouldn't listen to me. Willard, she said. Willard, Willard. That was his name. And you know what she finally did? Killed herself. No, she went into dementia precox. I couldn't stop her. Insulin shock could save her. I've done something awful. What? I can't tell you. I wrote a letter. Oh, come on! What an awful thing to Mr. Warren B. Thatcher? Yes. Did you mail it? No, I left it on his desk. He was gone by afternoon. Well, what did you write to Mr. Thatcher? I wrote him. I loved him. <laughs> you just come right out with it, don't you? Honey, get in your things. Get in my things. Yeah, get dressed. What for? You are going down to that office, and you are going to get that letter before he reads it. But the building is closed. Oh, well, wake up the watchman, baby, and get that letter. Take it from me. It would be an awful mistake for him to read it. I made a confession like that to a boss once myself. And boy, oh boy, the next morning was I unemployed. <laughs> get your things, sweetheart. Be quick about it. Yeah? What I said in the letter was true. Never mind that. That's strictly incidental. I do love it. Get me your things. You hear me? Yeah, I will. I will. I don't think that solves any of his problems. No. He's still desperate. Well, now you've heard of it, though. I'll come back after a while and try again. 
beginning to suspect what it is. Don't be suspicious. Keep your faith in possibilities, Alice. <laughs> What's that? I will hear the zoo. I can hear the fox crying. I wonder what they're crying for. The same thing we're crying for. They want for the hills and the freedoms the same as we do. Someone's coming. It's the keepers, the men with the feast and cages. Hello there, keepers. <sighs> I would like to be visiting the zoo. It's never too late to take a look at the boxes. I don't like to have them disturbed this way. They're restless. Monsters. One of the females is in the family way. I'm going to take a look at her. Maybe she's going to have babies in that smelly little cage. Sure. Or else would she have me outside in the woods? would be a whole lot better. That feisty little bitch will have me here. And like it. I suppose you have all the cage keys to the cages. I have the key to every cage in the zoo. All marked with tags? Yep. All marked with tags. So long. Uh, just one minute. Huh? Uh. <laughs> Officially the intermission. <laughs>